morning, everybody. Can you hear me in the back? Yeah. Okay. Yes, sir. Won't be long. <laughs> My name is Henry Sneeza. I'm the director of the Environmental Protection and Growth Management Department, and we have the pleasure of having the Animal Care Division within our department. And today is our, I think it's our first Animal Care Open House ever. And what we wanted to do is share the experience that we've had since we hired Lorelei back in March. She's come here, she's our first director that truly is from the no-kill perspective. And uh, it's been quite a learning experience and um, just wanted to give her a chance this morning and the rest of us a chance to uh, share with you what we've done, what we're doing, and, uh, and, and, and also welcome the support of the community. We've had a lot of support since Lorelei started and even before. And before and to uh, really achieve the no-kill, not only do we need to work as hard as we can, but we also really need to engage and, and get the support of the community. And with that, no-kill's been proven to work around the country, but it takes not only the government to do its part, but we also need to have great support from the community. So with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Lorelei and uh, thank her for being here and looking forward to your comments. Um, I want to thank all of you for being here. That's wonderful. Um, so I'd like, uh, you know, if, if people come in, can we leave one of the doors open? I want yes. I'm an open door policy kind of person, and that includes meetings. So leave those doors open um, and as you trickle in. Um, I have to say thank you. Thank you for allowing me to come here and support this community. Um, I have big ideas. I have, you know, I dream big. I started in No Kill when um, it was not cool. Um, I had the great support of Nathan Winograd and Dr. Jefferson, who started Austin Pets Alive as mentors. Even though I worked for the government agency, I was, you know, at opposite sides. I know, why are we doing this when we can do that? I was that employee always questioning, why can't we do this and we'll do that, you know, but as we graduate 17 years later, now they're the largest no-kill shelter in the nation and have been for over, gosh, six years now. So I want to tell you that, um, first of all, thank you and show you what we've done internally for six months, because as you know, I'm building a foundation and I need the right people on the bus. It's such a cliche sort of thing to say, but it's so true. The right people need to be in our shelter, uh, to help us support our foundation, and that means staffing. So there's a lot of changes going on in staffing, but I can tell you this staff that's here right now today, they were here at 6 a.m. to help me set up for this open house. That kind of support, you can't buy. That's in the heart. They believe in the mission, they're here to help, and you're gonna meet them afterwards, and if you have questions, they'd like to talk to you. I would too. You know, open door policy. So first, let's start. Um, thank you for being here. I hope you all got snacks. What's new? What the heck have we been up to? First of all, a big important thing to being no kill is you embrace your community. No matter what they say, no matter what they want to do, you listen. You open your doors and you listen. Because without the community support, we're not going to be no kill. This is a no-kill community. It's not just a no-kill shelter. And we want your support, and we want you to know that because of you, it's going to happen. So we open our doors to the community. Of course, you have to start in developing new programs, more life-saving programs. You develop national welfare partnerships. We now have best friends coming in next week to work side-by-side -side with our community. And there she is, our, our local rep. Thank you, Wendy. Um, and, and that's super important when you get a national animal welfare group like that to support us. Not only do they have huge dollars, but they have a wealth of knowledge and information. And they started as a grassroots project too, you know, just two kind of hippie-ish like guys and wives and let's save some pets and into this multi-million dollar animal wealth national group. We also have partnerships now with uh, ASPCA, Maddie's Fund, another huge group in California. Of course, you need to update your rules, which are your standard operation procedures. That's the rules, the list of your checklist. We have to have those. And when you come in, I uh, came into a new shelter, we had tons of rules, but if they're not being followed, <coughs> what's the point? So you needed a checklist. We needed to do new SOPs that told everyone what we need to do, and but why we need to do it, and how to do it. So if you understand it, you understand the reason why we need to do it. It saves lives because now we're on disease prevention is our highest protocol here right now. 
Financial awareness. We've been out without a business manager for uh, nine months. We just got one. He's been here two weeks. It's wonderful to have someone go through your budget line by line. We were in a survival mode when I got here. They shopped daily for product. We ran out of stuff. There was no vision. There was no structure. So we're right realizing we're spending way too much money when we need to keep it in here for our pets or we need to keep it out there for something else. You know, so we're, we're analyzing all of that. Um, I still haven't had a chance to do it line by line, but trust me, I will. I'm very frugal as a teenage mother. I know what it feels like to be poor, and I know what it feels like to be successful, and you watch every little penny, I kid you not, and I will here, you can trust me on that. So, opening the doors to the community, what does that look like? It means trust, you trust your groups that come in here and say, hey, I want to bring in 100 volunteers to walk dogs, wash dogs, talk to everyone, and I'm like, okay, let's do that. What did I do in Austin with that? I had Home Depot. I had Apple, I had Google, I had every corporation I could find to come in and help us. You open your door to the community and you talk to them. What do you need help with today? I need four people to do laundry. I need six people to help with cats. I need, you know, four people in the kennels. I need dog walkers. I need this, I need that. They're here to help. More corporations, more businesses are giving their employees a day of giving for free. It's a day of work for them. They want to give back. Go find those corporations. And you know what happened after I ran that program for three years? I started to charge them, <laughs> You want a day of giving? 100 buck donation. The bigger the group, the bigger the donation. You can do that because it's part of their workforce. It's part of their culture. Let's get in there and start talking to those big corporations. Proof social media outlet. You change Facebook to tell a story. It's not just a picture of a dog. Come adopt me. It's the backstory. How did I get here? Why am I here? Who was my owners? What happened here? You know, why do I have three legs and one eye? Can you help me? Yeah, you can, but you've got to make it personal. So we have a huge, much bigger reach. We're reaching more people every day. If you haven't all checked in on your iPhone, please, everyone, get on Facebook, check in right now. You know where that kicks all that information out to? the rest of the social media world out there. You're telling them that you're at Broward County Animal Care and Adoption today because you're here to support and learn what you can do to make us no kill. You're telling everyone that by checking in. And then some. Increase shelter events. We have to get out in the community. We need to bring pets to the people. So we are uh, partnering with storefronts now. We're going, guess what? Pet supermarket, you guys know that. They all have cats, right? They need to have dogs there every weekend, too, on a regular basis, so they know we're consistently going to be at the same spot. Outreach is essential to be to life-saving for no-kill. We're going to do more of that. It also increases more fostering and more volunteers, because now you want to come and be a part of this. You may not want to be in the shelter, but you may want to be at the store by your house. It's really easy. I'll meet you there with three dogs. Can you help me for two hours? Yeah. You volunteered. Collaborating and pursuing 501s in support of life saving. Tons of 501s in Florida. Tons. Come work with us. We're not only going to ask you and, and help you and keep asking you, but I want to support you. How do we support you? We're going to teach you how to write grants. You know there's free money for a 501. You need to know the language. We have a great grant writer. We're going to help you write grants. You know, or I'm going to teach you the language. It's what I did in Austin. The more pets you save, the more money you get. The more programs you develop, the more money you get. The more support you get. We're also going to do some more things I'll talk about later to help support our 501s. Super exciting. So what does it look like when you open your doors to the community? Well, here's what it looks like, some of them. It's pretty wild. <laughs> this is what it <laughs> I don't know which one of this was, but... This is one of our shelter shame dings, or it might be uh, clear the shelters, but I think it's a shame ding, right? Yep, think it is. Yeah, do you guys know? It's a, do you recognize it's yourself? It's a strut. It's a strut? The mud strut. Yeah, we did that. We did that. We let, what, 70 people walk dogs? Who's crazy? What, why not? So what did we get? We got great PR out of that. All of a sudden, we got a positive news story in the local paper, the Sun Sentinel, woohoo! Look at us. We got an interview that was positive. So 
So we let our fosters come in all hours. You know, when you when you become a volunteer here, congratulations. You're automatically a foster too. No big deal. Whenever you want to foster, we're going to send out those blasts. You can come. We'll give you the support, make you successful. You, you become a foster. These ones, I guess they know how to knit. They, uh, <laughs> this one really has a little fuzzy count, too. But, you know, make it fun. You need support. Uh, we started Facebook pages just for our volunteers and uh, just for uh, our, our fosters. So you can talk to each other, and you know it's us, and it's, we're, we can watch it. Um, and, and we can support you and go, what do you need? And you, you know, you help each other. And if you need something, let us know. You know, if you need someone here to meet you, or if you need someone in the field to meet you and take a, a kitten or a baby to you on to one of the ERs, we're going to help you with that. It's a phone call, but you need to have that contact, that direct line. Um, what else happens when you open your doors? Lunch buddy programs. I know hands down that when we get our dogs out of these kennels, into our community that they get more positive exposure. I went to a restaurant the other week and they said, oh yeah, we see your pets here all the time. I'm like, really? And, and that's where they go. Any patio in this vicinity that will let them have pets, they go meet our dogs. I actually had two volunteers come from this restaurant now that come here. So not only is it increasing exposure for these pets, but it's also giving us more volunteers because they want to be a part of what we're doing. Wow, you let your dogs go out on campus during the day? You betcha. Come on over. How many do you want? How many can you handle? You know, there's his little vest. Let's go. Take him out of here. New programs. This will never end. You can never develop enough programs to sustain your life saving. Dogs Playing for Life is a huge thing that we had to have happen here. You cannot kennel pets over and over and over for days and days and days. Dogs live to play. Now we let them, hey Frank, now we let them play to live because it gives them uh, emotional and physical support that they need while they're hanging in our shelter here waiting for their new home. So we had to bring them in. We had a seven-day seminar. It was wonderful to see our staff involved, seeing the pets that they care for, happy, playing, just being dogs. Yes, you can have 15 to 20 dogs in a playpen. Do they get in an argument once in a while? You bet they do. They have opinions. But I tell you, it's the little dogs that hold the grudge. The big dogs, oh, you ripped my ear. Oh, no, whatever, let's go swim. You know, the little dogs are like, never. Uh, but you know how they are. Community outreach and engagement. What, what we needed in the field, we had to recognize what that is. The schedules needed to change. I have the highest call volume was at 9.30. Where were our field officers? Well, they were trickling in and staggered to where they weren't supporting the needs of the community's calls. That had to change. So now we've, stayed, we've scheduled it so we have two officers in the same location where the highest calls come from. They need that support. We're talking to the people. They're recognizing us. We're leaving door knockers. How can I help you? I have food. I have leashes. I have collars. I have litter. I have this. I have knowledge. I have training. Tell me what you need to keep your pet healthy. Tell, I have dog houses. I have fencing. There's a grant for that. There's an app for that. There's a grant for that. We have a pet retention grant. There's nothing we won't buy to help you keep your pet at home. So talk to us. But we have to build that trust. Instead of seeing the animal control truck, they need to see the ice cream truck. Yes, free. We're going to pop up with adoptions, free microchipping, free rabies shots. Help, let me help you get your license. You know, that needs to happen more in the field. Community service, they, when I arrived, my community service, my, I'm sorry, my customer service agents weren't touching the pets. They weren't allowed to. You know, they had to have training before that was okay. How can you walk into a division and go, I need help to see Fluffy, can you help me? And they say, no, go down there and find someone. What kind of, that's not customer service, that's, they're going to exit. That's not service, that's the opposite of service. Now, they've had training, they can actually get up, jump over the counter, because there's not an opening there yet, and go out there and help you guys. You know, help all our customers. You need help? Start to finish. When I was an adoption counselor, and this is how I base it on my experience, for 10 years, over 2,000 animals were adopted, but when I had a, an adopter, I never left them. 
what do you want? You want a medium-sized dog that likes other kids and seems like it's house trained? I have one of my favorites. I've had him you know, right next to me. I'm going to walk him every day. Let me go introduce you. That's customer service. That's the best customer service. I want a grumpy cat that hates kids, that uses the litter box, that, you know, I know that cat. I'm over here. You know, you want that. Hands-on training. So we, they receive that through Dogs Playing for Life. We revise the adoption process to include a conversation, not just whipping out an application. Here, please fill this out. Give me your ID. No. Talk to me. Who are you? What do you need? What's your lifestyle? What, what kind of pet are you looking for? Do you want to run? Do you want to sit on the couch and watch movies? Do you like pizza? Because I like pizza crust. You know, what kind of pet it, it has to fit your lifestyle? Pompano. Wouldn't it be cool if we created something called Pompano Pets Alive? Modeling Austin Pets Alive. So you know what we're missing that we, we had in Austin and what we have in Los Angeles <coughs> is a brick and mortar building that our 501s run that the county or the city offers to a 501 to work in partnership with. Build your rescue groups. If you build it, they will come. Remember that? If you write a grant, you'll get funding. There's funding out there. <clears throat> right now you have Dr. Jefferson, who is the founder and director of Austin Pets Alive, offering mentoring for a 501, maybe two of you, maybe three, because in LA there's four 501s that run Los Angeles no-kill building. 